Welcome to Fairy Stamper, Annie Collins here. Today we'll be creating the Slimline Fairy card. Let's go over some of the products I used to create this card. I'm going to use our jelly plate to create our background, uh, our brayer, and I'm going to bring in some um, Slimline stitch and scallop dies for our card and base. From Lavinia, we're going to use the Fairy Door. We're only going to use that foliage part right there. From Fairy Hugs, the Hanging Vines. From Lavinia, Talk to the Moon. We're going to use part of that sentiment. And we're going to use the Mini Toll Stool and Mini Meadow Mushroom. Those are from Lavinia. And then from Fairy Hugs, we're going to use Lila and Robin as our featured dancers. The inks we'll be using are Versa Fine Claire in Nocturne and Green Oasis. Nocturne we'll be using for our fairies and our sentiment. To create our background, we're going to bring in a variety of distress oxides. Let's go over those real quick. Salvage Patina, Dusty Concord, Food Print Sketch, Chip Sapphire, and then for our mushrooms and our foliage, we're going to use Rustic Wilderness and crank Crackling Campfire. We'll be using um, our Distress Water Sprayer, some Sheer Sherma Sprays from Imagine Crafts, and our Water... Um, Nope, our barely hard glue and foam tape to put everything together. Now for our background to lift it, we're going to be using Accent 80 Pound Ultra Smooth Opaque White Cardstock. Now let's go ahead and start clearing everything off so we can get started on our background. Okay, so now we're going to create from lightest to darkest. We're going to start with the salvage patina and we're just going to swipe it across our jelly plate here. And then we'll use our brayer to blend them all the colors together. Now you may see that my ink doesn't go on perfectly smooth and that's because when I laid it onto my background so that you could see it rather than seeing this gray background, I laid it onto a laminated white cardstock. It created some bubbles and I like it because it adds more um, dimension and texture to the background. So as you can see, I'm using the brayer to blend the colors together and this makes it a lot smoother and a, nice, a lot lighter and faster for um, ink blending. I'm going to go ahead and add a little more the uh, salvage patina on the top. Repeat the concord, the yeah, the dusty concord, and I'm just going to keep blending this until I get a, a colorway that I like. And then I'll use my finger in certain places to blend it out a little bit more. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more of the uh, chip. No, I'm sorry, blueprint sketch on the bottom, and. Unfortunately, when I go ahead and die cut this, you'll see in a bit, I lose some of that blueprint sketch, but I'll, I'll bring it back in in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and keep blending, and now I'm wiping my brayer in between because I don't want it to blend too, too much um, into each other's colors just enough. I'm getting it more or less how I want it. Now I'm going to go ahead and spray it with some water using my Distress Sprayer to get that little oxidation or a splattery look in the background. And I'm also going to go ahead and bring in my Sheer Shimmer Spray. This one is in Frost, and that's going to create nice little shimmer dots in the background. It also gives you that feeling of maybe stars in the background or little um, fireflies, because our fairies will be dancing in the evening here. So. Now we're going to go ahead and lay our cardstock down and press it onto our jelly plate. We're just going to rub it nice and firm across the back here and then peel it up. And you can see this beautiful background. Now I want to have a little bit more of that salvage patina. I want a little bit lighter up there. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more, get my brayer and roll it on and blend those, blend that in, I'm sorry, a little bit more. So I don't have that sh those streaky marks of the of the cardstock, of the ink pad, not the cardstock. And then I'm going to go ahead and rub it again, and peel it up, and I'll have more of that a uh, salvage patina. I'm going to move my um, jelly plate because we're done with that. And now I'm going to get my uh, slimline die and decide where I want my to cut my panel from. I think this is a good spot, so I'm going to go ahead and run that through my die cutting machine, which is off to the side. Now I have that, and I'm going to go ahead and ink my bottom. Like I said, I lost some of my blueprint sketch, so I'm going to go ahead and bring in a blending brush and add a little bit of this blueprint sketch on the bottom. 
And what I'm doing here is trying to create some, a little bit of an anchor or a stage for our dancing fairies. I know they can float because they have wings, but I want them to feel more anchored so that they're dancing in a meadow. So now I'm going to go ahead and pick up my chip sapphire and again use that just on the edge on the bottom here just to darken it a bit. So it's not so light and it feels more like the ground. Once I get that done, I'm going to bring in my splat box and add a little bit more splatter. This time I'm using the sparkle, the sheer shimmer spray in sparkle. This will give us even more highlights and it'll give us more of that um, fireflies dancing in the background or night sky stars feel. Now these sprays have um, all the mica powders on the bottom so you have to give them a nice good sh uh, shake but from side to side like you do a bell so not to clog up your um, nozzle although I never use it really with my nozzle. I usually pull it out and use the little stirrer there. <laughs> well now I'm going to heat set this so I can proceed to the next back, the next part of our card, which is stamping our images. I'm going to bring in my stamping platform here, place it here, and I'm going to use the Fairy Hugs Hanging Vines, and we're going to create sort of like a curtain for our stage. We're going to use the smaller vine across the top and then the thicker, longer vines um, on the sides. So here's the smallest thinner vine. I'm going to place it across the top. We're going to have to stamp this twice so we can get it fully across the top. And I want to make sure it's, it's going to fit, making sure that I have space here for my other vine. I want them to touch but I and overlap, which is fine. I just want to make sure I leave enough space. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the Versafine Claire and Green Oasis and ink it up and stamp it. We'll do the same thing across for the other side. I like to give it a good firm press, give it a minute for the ink to soak into the paper, and there we have it. But now we're going to repeat the process. I'm going to wipe it off real quick. Sorry for shaking of the camera. Didn't realize I was on my uh, camera stand. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and repeat the process by inking it up once again and stamping it down. And we'll do the same thing with the vines on the side. This will create our little uh, faux curtains, so to speak. Just imagine these little fairies putting on a show in the woods for all their friends. And they drape the vines just so to give them a nice stage. So I'm going to put them, the longer one, on the side here, but I don't want it to reach all the way towards the bottom. You don't forget we'll be placing the mushrooms and our other green foliage there. So I'm going to move it up just a tad, and then I'll ink it up and stamp it. Give it a nice firm press. And then we'll do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and put a little bit of washi tape on the bottom because it's starting to move and I don't want it to move. All right, so now it's time for our mushrooms and our foliage. And unfortunately, my camera stopped recording for whatever the reason, so you missed that part. But I'm just showing you that I used the foliage with all across the bottom here and my mushrooms. And I just put them in an up and down so that they're not looking straight so it creates a nice soft meadow. All right, now we're gonna bring in our stars of the show, which is Lila and Robin here and we're going to put them in the middle so I'm going to get everything settled and I'm going to use my acetate as a guide as to where to put my uh, stand. So I'm going to line them up here on top of the acetate, make sure I have it where I want it. Once I do, I'll close the lid, pick it up, remove my acetate backing and ink it up with some Versafine Clair and Nocturne. I'm going to grab some washi tape to hold my panel so it doesn't move on me. And also, this is a um, full coverage stamp. 
It's a silhouette stamp. So I'm going to stamp this several times. And I will press and I'll leave it, the stamp on the paper so that ink can absorb a little bit into it before I pick it up. And I'm using my cloth here to press, apply some pressure. As you can see, if you pick it up first time, you don't have that full coverage. Now I went ahead and brought in my dry eraser uh, to help me give that even more firm and even pressure. All right, so now I'm going to decide on my sentiment. I know I want it either on the top or the bottom, and I'm going to go ahead and put it on the top to right across our little vines. So I don't want to stamp it directly on our vines, so I bring in some of that scrap paper from our background. I'm going to just trim this little piece right here, which is the lighter one which has the most salvage patina, and I'm going to go ahead and stamp our sentiment on that. I place my sentiment on a uh, acrylic block, and you can do this one of two ways. You can go ahead and directly ink the portion that you want, or you can mask off the portion that you don't want, and then ink your sack. That's what I'm going to do, because I don't want to take any chances here. So I'm going to go ahead and now ink it. Once it's inked completely, I'll remove the little postage, not postage, yeah, post it, sorry, posted tape here. And then I'm going to go ahead and stamp. Please excuse my head. Just trying to line it up. Once I have that, then I can trim it down to the size I want for my card. So here's our panel. And I know I want it up here. So I'm just making sure it's going to fit nicely. I know I have to trim some. So I'm going to trim this part in an angle. Nice and close. And then I decide, well, maybe two angles will look nice. It doesn't. I don't like it. <laughs> I gave it a try anyway. I'm like, hmm, no. So I'm going to go ahead and trim the other side nice and straight. And I realize it's a little too thick, so I'm going to trim it down just a bit on both ends here. Once I have it nice and thin, it'll, I'll add some foam tape to the back and we'll place it on our card. So here's our card panel, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, adhere our card base together. So to create our card base, I use heavyweight 110 pound white card stock. And I'm going to um, I die cut that twice from our slim, using our slimline scalloped die. And then I'm going to create a crease here about a half an inch in, <clears throat> excuse me, so that a score line, I should say. And then I'll crease it so that that will be the back of our card. <clears throat> excuse me. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold this or crease it on the on the score line. I'll do it twice, so now it opens nice and easy. And then I'm going to line up the, the top and bottom of my panels here. So I'm going to go ahead and add some adhesive here, just to that little score air portion. Then you add it all the way through, then you just have a postcard. <laughs> all right, so now I'm going to go ahead and press that firmly there. And then once that's done, now you have a nice shaped card base. So I got a little ink there. I'm going to use my mono eraser to remove it. Now I'm going to go ahead and adhere our panel uh, that we created here of our dancing fairies onto our card base. Putting a little liquid adhesive, of which I like to use because it gives me that wiggle room to center things. I'm going to go ahead and put my acrylic uh, tray on here and my distress bottle just to give it a little weight for it to adhere and then while I do that I'm going to put some foam tape on the back of my sentiment and also bring in some of my embellishments get that all set up okay so now let's go ahead and add our sentiment to the center here I want it to be just between our fairies try to get that as straight as possible once I have that on there, then we'll start adding little dots of adhesive of this little, uh, Barely Art glue. And we're going to go ahead and add from Doodle's Paper Playground, the sparkle blend called O Hollow. It's very um, holographic and it has little pinks and 
um, silvery holographic and black but we're just going to pull out just a little silvery one and we're going to place them all around our card here and in between our little fairies and they just add little stars and shimmer to it once i have all those adhered our card will be complete putting our last few here and i decide that i want some by my sentiment as well so i pick a, a little bit larger one and i place it right underneath the sentiment and the little star shaped one right next to the word dance and i'm using my embellishment wand here it's called the sparkle sparkle wand and it's from a doodles paper playground so here's where i find my bigger accented one this one has like black and silver stripes and it's holographic it's really pretty slide that right there and then my little star okay so here is our card. You can see all that holographic shimmer there. Let me bring you a little bit more close where you can see the app. And you can see the background, how it created all these nice textures and layers. And we have our little stage for our dancing fairies. And even through the wings, you get some of that shimmer. So that's why I didn't add anything extra to them. So there's our card, beautifully put together there. So thank you so much for being here today. I hope you found some inspiration. <laughs>